Awesome audio. Perhaps I was talking when I should have been listening. Hey, hey, and we're back with another awesome audio podcast. A couple of the usual suspects hello, hello. here with me. Candace, oh, no. Ethan, and Ben. Oh, yeah. Nice to meet you. How you guys? <laughs> nice to meet you, too. How you guys doing? Doing pretty good. Doing good, despite the rain. Yes. I love the rain. I love, so, I love yeah. it. So it's, it's enhancing my day. Oh, yeah. okay. Today was like a good sleeping in day and just taking it lazy. Right. We, we do like the homeschool thing at home and the kids were just not even... It was like noon by the time I left the house and they weren't... <laughs> they weren't even. They weren't even thinking about wow. it. They're like, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if today it's even gonna happen. So, uh, what are you guys watching these days? Good. What watching. Well, I just whatever's uh, coming out. Whatever's coming honestly, out. I've been watching a lot of like series than movies. I feel like recently. But whatever they dish out to you, you'll watch. You're yeah. you're passive. Just whatever yeah. gets yeah, put in front new, of you. Yep. Whatever's out on Netflix, Disney Plus. Yeah, okay. I, I, I try to stay up to date with most stuff that's coming out and watching it if it sounds good or looks interesting to me. But uh, last night, I got to watch Sonic Two, the the Ooh. new Sonic movie, the final Jim Carrey film. Yeah, if you believe In all theory. that hype. <laughs> he said if they he said if they write a good enough script for the third one, we'll come back. Oh, did he? Yeah. Oh, so he already broke his own rule. Broke the rule. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, but yeah, no. So I work at the movie theater in Finlay, and uh, I was there last night, and you know. There's like two sets usually on weekdays. So you have like the, the early evening set and then like the, the late evening set. And I cleaned all the theaters for the first set and then like nobody showed up for the last one. <laughs> Barely anyone. There were like six, uh, probably like 15 people total in the entire building for like the last hour and Is a half. Is that of par for like post pandemic movie theaters or? It was the first couple of months lately, like unheard of. So okay. we went from like seven o'clock to eight o'clock without anybody, which would have meant that we got out an hour and a half early. So the last movie was a Doctor Strange that let out at like ten thirty. Uh-huh. Three people show up five minutes before we were closing. Oh, the come on, to watch <laughs> you Doctor have to Strange. keep the entire theater so open the for the enti- three yeah, people. We can close the stand and stuff, but I cleaned like the last theater that let out, and then me and my manager just sat and watched Sonic Two because there was no one in there. <laughs> nice. And uh, I got paid to watch it, so it was it was still like a two and a half out of five, but um, it was pretty two and a half it out was, of it five. It was enjoyable because I got paid to watch it. Right. I think <laughs> enhanced the uh, experience. Is it better than the original? I barely watched the original, but the <laughs> writing another <laughs> passive watch. Yeah, yeah, the the writing in this one was a little um, in your face. Like some of the like quirks and quips were like uh, I was I was chuckling a little bit, but uh, after a while it's just beating me over the head. I was like, get uh, this over with. So, so what's the uh, what's the plot of the movie? I mean, I, mean, I played a lot of the video games. So uh, there's like they have like the the emerald. They have to find the like emerald that gives you like all this power. That's essentially it. No, <laughs> Idris Elba plays Knuckles, who comes in. Oh, he's nice! Like, the, like misunderstood bad guy. That's he's, pretty so good casting. Helping, I didn't know. know that. It's uh, it's pretty. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't. I wouldn't have picked it out like if I had just sat down to watch the movie, but I knew it beforehand. So D- does he speak with his accent, or does he? Did he hold back? He held back a little bit. It's like a really interesting voice. I really liked it. So. Okay, so so this movie included Knuckles and Tails, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And did uh, did Jim Carrey get fat? Isn't no. that like the part of he part of like a, the, uh, he built like a giant robot at the end that like is like his like comic, oh or like the uh, like the video game like look. the final boss of Sonic yeah. Two if you guys <laughs> are into retro gaming at all that was pretty classic yeah. it was some pretty good it was uh, pretty good visuals too I don't know <laughs> what happened I mean, you guys are familiar with actual like Sonic like story and lore and Not stuff really, like that no. a little because like at some point in the series they switched the Jim Carrey like Jim Carrey's character they changed his name it wasn't always Dr. Eggman yeah it was Dr. Robotnik and I'm just like when did that happen well it's Robotnik in the movie and okay and Sonic just starts calling him Eggman for some reason oh okay yeah alright well just another one of those unexplained yeah. things yeah, yeah, yeah. probably just a nickname yeah because he's a little bit bigger or yeah. I don't it's know like in the game in the call movie, him Eggman so. like a nickname Shape, I don't yeah. know is his body shaped like an egg well it is in the game, in the game. yeah okay yeah. All right, so so we got Sonic Two last night. You're just watching anything. Yeah, most the most recent movie I saw was uh, Doctor Strange at the drive-in, but like I fell asleep in the middle of it. Really? So I've only seen the beginning. It of doesn't the- count if you fall asleep. It doesn't count. What about you? Anything horror right now? Really? Yeah. What is I the mean, name of that new? Oh, it's going to be a terrible story because I can't remember the name of it. But there was supposed to be a, a, a recent release that was supposed to be like the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre, right? X, it was like, probably. yeah, that's that's it. Yes, you enjoyed that X was really good. I got a yeah, shirt that. from like the company A twenty four. Well, that always helps. Uh, yeah. Sure, I like that movie. Thanks for the T shirt. Yeah. Well, 
No, no, like do I bought one for afterwards. Yeah. Like it liked it yeah, so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was <laughs> no, I didn't get it for free. <laughs> I yeah, thought it was like this it, promotional thing. Yeah. Like, like our movie. Here's a shirt. Yeah. So that it was like this group of like independent filmmakers that are making like an adult film. Yeah, and they, and they go right. rent out this cabin from this these two old people, and the like old lady's like insane because she wants to like have sex with her husband but he can't because he has a heart problem so when she finds out that they're like filming this adult video she like is trying to get with these kids young adults <laughs> filming yeah. this video Not kids. um huh. and, like the first like half of the movie's kind of slow because they're like filming all that <laughs> stuff but then Ew. like probably like 30 40 minutes in it just Wow, all, it takes like, that long. Horror, That's like, sort of a slow killers. burn for yeah. 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 It's like know. building tension and then it all kind of Because you're like, oh, on. is this yeah. movie really going to be like scary or like horror? Yeah, like where's it's the just, scary? Like, it's, more sudden, of a, it's more of a slasher yeah. than, a, okay. than a horror. But uh, what do you call the end what? credits scene a spoiler? I don't know. I don't know. If it's questionable, it probably wouldn't go there. Okay, cool. <laughs> there is you know? an end credit scene in it that yeah, is like it's nothing like I've ever good. seen in a movie before. It's pretty before. cool. Really? Yeah. they do something really like unique with it. Yeah. So. Huh. But. Yeah. I, don't, I just don't have time for a full movie. I'll, I'll <laughs> still find time for like a series, because, but I just don't have the time in one sitting for the whole movie. To, in high school, I was like that. I would only watch TV shows mm -hmm. because I could, I could dedicate 30 minutes or an hour to watch one or two episodes. Yeah. But I would always end up watching like three episodes. So then it was three hours of my time anyway. Yeah. When, right when the pandemic hit, I could no longer have the patience for a TV show like because I had all the free time in the world. Like, I, need, <laughs> yeah. I need two hours to digest this one story. So I don't know what happened there, but now I am like a movie, like only watch, I can sit down for a movie, but like a TV show is too much of a commitment. I mean, if I do, it has to be like a specific, like, oh, well, it's movie night with the kids and then it winds up being Ice Age and then I just want to <laughs> die. Uh, or I guess every once in a while, if it's a movie that I really think that I wanted to see or something, I'll wind up scrubbing through half of it and yeah. just sort of like, yeah, piecing it together. Yeah. Um, but I have found time to to catch up on on Better Call Saul, and if you guys are not watching I still this, haven't watched Breaking Bad. You're better, fools. Better Call Saul. <laughs> like you're you're missing like transcendent television, mm -hmm. and you're. I think I'm gonna wait for it. This is, it's in the last season, right? Yeah, but they're oh, man, they're doing one of those things too, where they do mid season premieres, oh, yeah, and so yeah. so it's we're approaching a mid season finale, and okay. really that means we've gotten like five episodes, yeah. and they're gonna take a break mm -hmm. for months. Yeah. It's so bogus. I think mean, I'll wait till that's over and then I'll watch all of it. Breaking Bad. Yeah, I would recommend song. doing, like, watching things in the the order it was yeah, all yeah, released. Yeah. Mm -hmm, not not sure. in, like, this, not, you know, like, I, I recently went through the Star Wars movies with the kids and mm -hmm. we went, we started with prequels and we oh. went through it in mm -hmm. chronological order yeah. like that. But I think that, that in this universe, you're supposed to watch it unfold the way the storytellers are giving it to you. Yeah. So that would be my recommendation. That's always my go-to for, like, Marvel movies and stuff is, like, release, you watch them release order. Um, yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just watched them all chronological. Yeah, that's fine, so. but like the post credit yeah. scenes don't make sense. Well, to yeah. each their own, Candace. Order, There's no yeah. wrong answer there. Or you could do the, the machete cut for Star Wars, if you know what that is. No? So you go uh, episode four, episode five, and then like you get the reveal that Darth Vader's Luke's father. Spoiler alert, sorry. <laughs> and then you go back and watch the prequels. And then episode six, and the you can watch the sequels if you want to. Huh. But yeah, I never heard of that. Machete? Something like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cause it's I'll try, I mean, any reason to watch all the Star Wars movies again? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, sure, I'll just reinterpret it that <laughs> yeah. way. So I actually wrote down a couple questions for you because I wanted to take this podcast in a direction Ooh. today. Yeah. So you're all, you're all media production, but like filmmakers, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So first question there is specific to you. Who are the most influential filmmakers that kind of like got you set and like, oh, I want to do that, right? So what do you think? I'll let y'all... Is there somebody specific that you look up to like that? That's like an established director or something? Or like movies that have been made and you're like, whoa, that was a reason why I want to do this. Actresses, but not filmmakers. Okay. Oh, yeah, you could... So you could, like, yeah, I like Meryl Streep. Okay, so any movie Meryl Streep is in, yeah. you watch and you're like, wow, I'm inspired to do... Yeah. So do you want to act? I'm like behind... I'm like, I do stuff in front of the camera, but I also like learning the stuff behind it. I think it's important. If, like, if you're going to be in front of the camera, you should know what's going on behind it, so... It's a half and half thing. Like growing up, I had. Did you guys have Video Star? <laughs> that Video uh -huh. Star. If no. you're familiar with it, okay. Well, you can make music videos with songs that you oh, could no. purchase from like Apple. Uh, so like and I would, yes, I would make like ten of them, like every day, make music videos and stuff. And that's when I knew, like, I liked creating content mm. and stuff. 
but also like I was also like in them and that was fun too yeah you don't <laughs> really hear too many people I mean I think it would be refreshing to most people to hear a person that has some aspirations to be on screen to be like and I also know how the camera works mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. right that's not uh, th those two things don't always come hand in hand right I think so I would uh, I would say I definitely have some influential people if you're maybe wrapped up I'm there. wrapped up. Wrapped up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I could go on a little bit of a tangent, but I won't. Uh, I think definitely, like, when I was growing up, like, George Lucas, obviously, with Star Wars. Okay. I was like, oh, this is cool. And I watched, like, all the behind-the-scenes stuff for, like, hours. I was like, I don't know how the, any of this works. And then... Yeah, he's one of those that was, like, he's like, super into the technology, mm -hmm. right? You know, there's a couple of guys I can think of, like, that George Lucas and James Cameron that, like, yeah. or Peter Jackson want to develop actual new technology to mm -hmm. sort of, like they have like this vision they're like well the technology doesn't exist yet we have yeah. to make it and that's that's pretty intense but lucas also has uh he's got his mind wrapped around this like adventure storytelling mm -hmm. that i think uh he when when he describes how he came up with the indiana jones thing it's like just this reinterpretation of old serial movies and stuff yeah. like that so that that's uh I, I agree with you there for sure for that reason yeah. so him and then more recently like i think around when the pandemic started also i was like well, I have all this free time in my hands. Let me just sink my teeth into, like, the history of, like, filmmakers, directors, producers. Like, I didn't know any of the sort of, like, classifications or anything like that. So, I was like, well, I'll educate myself. And Christopher Nolan and Taika Waititi are, have become – and, like, Edgar Wright because Baby Driver is my favorite movie ever. Um, favorite movie of all time. Yeah, top of is. the list. Top of the list. That okay. and Jojo Rabbit are tied for number one. Um, but I would say, yeah, watching, like, I watched all of Christopher Nolan's movies, and he has, like, this obsession with time mm -hmm. and how he can use it differently, and same here. And I'm like, okay, that's right up my alley. And he writes and directs him himself to, like, almost perfection, I'd say. A little bit of a fanboy there, but... Memento was, like, a special experience. Oh. Oh, watching yeah. Memento for the first time was just like, whoa, you can do yeah. that with storytelling was, and stuff. Yeah, I had to watch it, like, twice back to back because I didn't... I couldn't pick. I was like, it's I pretty have mind -blowing. to watch that again. Yeah. So that is inspiring to me. And then um, how much, like, if you've seen any of Taika Waititi's movies, like Thor Ragnarok. I have not. I have no idea what uh, what words are you he, saying when you say that. <laughs> he's from New Zealand. Um, but he did Jojo Rabbit, the third and fourth Thor movie, and uh, some old stuff. But he has this very unique sense of humor that I really like. Huh. And also writes and directs all of his own stuff. And I, I just think watching those and studying the process of how these directors like write their own stuff and direct their own stuff is just super interesting to me because you can kind of be like a one-man powerhouse with that stuff if you have a big enough vision and have the like passion to see it through yeah well you also have to like gosh you have to have enough like uh i, I don't know what it is like influence over others yeah. right in order to like there's so many moving parts mm -hmm. right you don't if you're a director of a film and you're probably working with your own story or something like that yeah. but like you still have to get a crew of a thousand to do the things that you want them to do. Yeah, I, that part's really daunting to me if I ever end up in that position. I'm like, I would feel guilty telling all these people what to do, but also, like, you're here to work on my thing, so, mm. yeah. Are there really four Thor movies? The fourth one comes out in July. Is that where Natalie Portman has a bigger role again? Yeah, like she, she, like, is a Thor. Is a Thor? Yeah. What, what does that mean? <laughs> they released, like, a picture of her in the outfit. Yeah, I think I saw oh. it. Oh, my God. <laughs> What does that mean? Oh, okay. <laughs> is that a good or a let's bad just, reaction? Or so. just a gross one? A good one. <laughs> okay. Good is she cute? <laughs> she looks good in that Thor outfit. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Are all these oh. girls about to be Thor for Halloween? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> well, well, I don't she, know. She was working out, too. So I mean, she I, put in the effort. She must still be popular, but I mean, she, Natalie Portman's old now. I mean... Yeah, I guess. She would have been popular with, like... For like the the age group of like young kids dressing up as her when when she played like Queen Amidala know, yeah. or something. I don't know. She was in like she's been in some pretty good stuff recently, like Black Swan and Annihilation. You know, she's one of those actresses that has just like kept her stuff together her entire life. Mm -hmm. Like, didn't I don't know? It just seems like she's got integrity, but stayed like uh, a regular person somehow. Yeah. You know, but she's been a, she's a child star. I mean, the professional came out when she was what like ten or mm -hmm. something, right? Yeah. Hmm. What about you, Ethan? You got any influential, like, even, you could do, like, I, so specific honestly, movies. Honestly, it, right now, I'm more, like, leaning towards audio than video, but I still enjoy that kind of filmmaking. But what got me into, like, filmmaking was more of the people that do, like, short films for, like, film festivals or, like, advertisements and stuff like that, because um, my mom, when I was in um, middle school, worked for, like, an arts commission up in Sylvania, and... I spent a lot of time with her friends that would make just short films for companies or would do a lot of film festivals and stuff like that. 
So on the side of filmmaking, it's more like shorter probably stories than like actual full length movies. Um, but biggest inspiration like right now probably be Jordan Peele. Um, I like that a lot of his movies are like horror based, but have like good messages in them. Yeah, they've like got a like a like real a, hefty dose of social yeah. commentary, right? Mm-hmm. And I also like that he brings um, a lot of diversity to like casting and stuff, which is not something you typically see in movies still as much as there should be. So do you think that, uh, is he just, his career path is interesting because he started out as like, you know, comedy duo, right? Yeah, right. Um, and now he's pretty much sunken himself into like made a big name for himself out of his horror films. Mm-hmm. And it seems like he's going to continue in that direction. Um, what was the, the most recent, like he, he sort of produced and brought back uh, the Candy Twilight Man. Zone and stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah. He did Candyman as well. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't like that the one. The reboot. Which, yeah. Um, and he's got one coming out called Nope, which is looks like to be some like alien kind of movie, I mm. think, based on the trailer. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm It's crazy to think, one. you know, when you have success like he did with Get Out, mm-hmm. you just get like a blank check. And oh, yeah. Like, what do you want to do now? That's <laughs> what he got. He was like, got a blank check for us. And I didn't like that one as much. But Really? Yeah, I love those. But, um, so, what would you do, yeah. Ben, with your blank check? My blank check. Yeah, you just like did the thing, and it just hit it big. So everybody believes in you, and like here, whatever you want, and you're gonna do the we'll thing. Do that, that what is that? One second. That passion project that's all about like so, uh, to- told in a weird timeline. So probably I have this um, notes page of all the like movie ideas and stuff that I have. Oh yeah. And uh, that wow. little line keeps getting bigger. It's insanely long. So I would have to go through and uh, cherry pick one. But I would definitely. I would like spend some time writing a, a really good time travel movie. I think time something travel. like a little inspired by Back to the Future, but something unique. What are the best time travel movies? Back to the Future. There was a new one recently. Uh, it was a Netflix film. Um, the Adam Project is that that one that you're thinking of? I think so. Ryan yeah. Reynolds. What, yeah. Yeah, I yeah, haven't yeah. seen that yet, but that one wasn't bad. Yeah. I liked it. Um, that was cool. I'd agree. Back to the Future has to be on the list. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a movie, the old Disney Channel movie called Minutemen that I think really <laughs> sparked my like interest in that as well. Huh. Um, recently, there's like a some a movie that I've been obsessed with that came out in 2020 called Tenet. Oh uh, yeah, Tenet was cool. Yeah, and I just seeing like a lot not, of people didn't not, see that because of pandemic didn't see stuff. That. I saw of it four times in the theaters. Masked up. And, and it was also like, another movie that suffered from the the standard Christopher Nolan like like audio yeah. like music is too loud like uh, mm-hmm. indiscernible dialogue and yeah. like just like too heady of a film for oh, some people. Yeah, for sure. I, but I think that one was really unique with like the concept of how they did the time traveling. Yeah, the where inversion it wasn't, like, stuff. Yeah, where it wasn't. Oh, you're jumping back. You have to like if you want to go back, you got to take the long way. Like you got to invert yourself and stick it out. Huh. But. And plus the visuals of all that, where they shot it, they developed an IMAX camera to shoot film backwards and stuff. It was, it's all, it's pretty cool. But yeah, definitely back to the Look future. Look at him. Do you see the way he smiles? He's I'm talking sorry. about Christopher <laughs> Nolan stuff. Like, <laughs> I met the doc and got his autograph. Huh? Believe it or not, in Back to the Future, yeah. Really? You met Doc and Brown? Um, you met Christopher Lloyd in yeah. the flesh. Really? Yes. Where? In eighth grade, so. Did he say Great Scott to you? Not to me, but he did with... Um, he uh, said the thing in he, your presence? He said it in my presence. You so. met live action <laughs> Rick from Rick and uh, So they had like a, a car show and it was full of the like people who had made like replicas of like the cars and stuff. Hundreds of them. And like the cast of them came and my show choir, I wasn't... Because I was in middle school, wasn't in the high school group, but they performed because that year they did a Back to the Future themed show and then he went up and talked and then mm. like the guy who portrayed him they both said together oh great scott it was That's really cool. cute oh that, that that is really cool because you know the a, using the same movie the guy that played uh biff mm-hmm. like he's a he does some stand-up comedy now oh, and right. he very specifically like his act is i will not do any back to the future <laughs> stuff for you like i will never call you butthead or like whatever <laughs> he's just doesn't do it mm. It's like a hard no. That's kind of like how Harrison Ford is a Star Wars nowadays. Yeah. I feel like. He's so. always been a disgruntled yeah. person about like the, the characters that he's played, I guess. So like on the subject of meeting famous people but not meeting famous people, <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if anyone here has watched Supernatural or The Boys, but yeah. Eric Kripke, the guy that made them, um, graduated from my high school in Sylvania. And before I had watched supernatural knew what that was he came in to my high school mm-hmm. during like my junior senior year 
and after watching it now, I'm like so jealous that I didn't get to meet him because mm. he came in <laughs> one day, and I was like, who, I don't know who this is. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People like, like when you told me that a while ago, I was like, hold on, this dude like produced like that show, The Boys. I'm pretty sure he had a little bit of a hand in Invincible, which is like just these like Amazon Prime shows that he's been doing recently. Mm-hmm. Like, and he's just from, he graduated from, like, 20 minutes north of here. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's, like, a little unsung hero moment. Or, like, I don't know, hometown yeah. thing. That I'm, like, I didn't know that. That's rad. But I'm just, like, I wish I knew who this person was, like, two <laughs> years earlier. <laughs> yeah, right. Ah, uh, so, regret. Yeah. My, yeah. I have a, one of my uncles that I'm relatively close with is a, like, commercial director out in California but like raised in Finlay graduated from Finlay High School and like you just don't see, like some of these people that are, have insanely successful careers you yeah like, have these insanely out. boring beginnings <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, like <laughs> north northwest ohio and they're not they're not talking about it yeah <laughs> i don't know well it's also it's it's nice to know that once you're you know you're in northwest ohio that it's possible to get out oh yeah isn't that I nice like that. yeah <laughs> I'll say like when I heard my uncle was doing commercials for like Overwatch and uh, he did one for a Geico and like Avengers Endgame did like a crossover and they hired him to direct that. I was like, well, if you did it, nice. I can do it. Who says I can't do it? And he graduated from BG. So, Ooh. yeah, pretty inspiring. <laughs> so, so guys, I, uh, on the awesome audio uh, social media platforms, I've been posting a lot of stuff, but I, I got the most, uh, the biggest conversation out of this. So I wanted to open it up to you guys. Best movie soundtrack. Mm. You don't have oh, to pick one, ooh, just uh, best Guardians movie. Of Ga- Guardians, of Guardians of Galaxy. Galaxy. Yeah, the mixtape. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. That was a great concept. I mean, he's walking around with a Walkman at the, mm-hmm. you know, the first time you meet that character. Yeah. That was such a cool intro. I really like the soundtrack to Spider-Verse mm-hmm. as well as the original Halloween. Spider-Verse has Spider-verse like a lot really of Post Malone one. on it, right? There's it's some like other post, things. It's a lot of, yeah, like modern hip hop mm-hmm. stuff, which I, I think is really good. Um, hmm. Not really a movie, but Stranger Things. Love the yeah, sure. Of audio, yeah. I mean, well, that. there's a big difference between like the the compositional like score yeah, and stuff like that. Score soundtrack. Yeah, I th- I'm thinking soundtrack okay, for now. Okay. I mean, we can we can Halloween divulge then. into yeah. a whole other conversation mm, if you want. But yeah, I'm thinking like sure w- you know popular music that was included as a soundtrack. I would have to agree with Guardians of the Galaxy being. I'm going on like that. dazed and confused. That's I what I seen that. That's what I posted. Days you've never seen da- like not, Richard Linklater films. Nope. Like you like no. those? Uh, I mean, familiar. like a, like a Scanner Darkly or a, a Waking Life. Those things that are have, that took film and put like weird a- animation over top of yeah, it. Yeah, I so. need to see them, but I have not. <laughs> and the the before series, right? Before Sunrise, before I've Sunset. Those, those are on my list. I haven't, I haven't seen them yet. Um. If I remember right, Ferris Bueller's Day Off has a pretty good soundtrack. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like Tarantino Ooh. films always have an awesome mm-hmm. soundtrack. <laughs> I, I I used to just it was like when I when I had a CD collection, I'd have Pulp Fiction soundtrack that I just listened to over and over again. That's also one that I've never seen. A little bit of a. If you're gonna be a filmmaker, here. man, you gotta know, catch up on some classics, got, dude. What I are you got doing? Pulp Fiction spoiled for me by a text by a public speaking textbook. <laughs> and then it ruined my uh, passion. Well, that movie it. came out in 1994, I, man. Yeah, You're a little behind. I wasn't born until after that, so. Well, you had your chance. chance. <laughs> That's fair. But yeah, no, I'd say, I mean, I mentioned earlier, but I think Baby Drivers, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and Guardians of the Galaxy are probably my top three to come to mind. Um, hmm. A lot of other responses included, like, Big Lebowski. Um, some of the classics, like Easy Rider. Okay. Um Mm-hmm. Big uh, no, I just said Big Lebowski. Uh, a lot of Coen Brothers movies. Yeah. What about Guess. Cars? Cars. <laughs> cars. <laughs> that one, honestly, <laughs> Life is a Highway had a grip Life on me at six man. years old. Yeah, that was a that was that was a bop. Yeah. That was pretty good. I don't know. Toy yeah. Story. <laughs> Toy Story. I think there's a couple songs in there. Songs. That are, <laughs> The Wasn't Dis- that like Paul it's, Newman? It's all like all Disney so. ones. Just, Any mm. Disney movie, I feel yeah. like, always has a good soundtrack. Uh-huh. Most most Disney movies. Yeah. What but Disney movie why. had a bad soundtrack? That's probably the easier one. I hmm, I wouldn't say any of bad ones, but I definitely say that there's some that are like you know multiple songs from, and then there are some that like you don't know more than like one song from. Yeah, but that could also be just like based on how many times you've watched it. Cause like my parents growing up would only show us Disney movies, so like. There would be like High School Musical, no, probably every song from, but mm-hmm. like something like Princess and the Frog, we didn't watch that as yeah. often, so right. don't know as many songs from. 
Yeah, I'd say same. Every once in a while, Disney and Pixar just just miss it. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're just like uber successful, like all the time. Mm-hmm. And then like you know, every seven years it seems like they have like, one that's just a stinker or just nobody likes mm-hmm. or or whatever mm-hmm. just gets missed. Like uh, what was it like the Good Dinosaur? Like nobody watched oh, yeah. that. Oh yeah, that was, that was, a, that was a mess. <laughs> yeah, sad. I and, like, right in the beginning, so. just I was like, oh no, Ooh. what happens? Oh, dad dies. <gasps> well, that's like every Disney movie. I know. Yeah, but you know what? But uh, I, I mean, still expect that at the end. That like right at the beginning. I was mm-hmm. like, honestly, oh. I mean, Tang- I, Tangled is probably one of my favorite Disney movies yeah, ever. That's a good one. That one's really good. I was on like vacation at a beach in North Carolina, and we were like, "There's nothing else to go see." All the guys went and saw Tangled. All the girls <laughs> went shopping. One of the best yes. moments of my life. Honestly. Wow, definitely so proud yeah. moment for all yeah. those men. A yeah. big chicken little guy. Yeah, chicken but, little. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Um, I will say though, I feel like it's harder because they're doing like that whole thing where they're only putting the movies on Disney Plus, but instead of like in theaters, I feel mm. like right, and they're making you pay for that well, premium. Right. Month. And I feel like some. I mean, I'm sure it's making them money now, but I feel like not. It's not going to bring in as big of an audience as it could. I think it's like a short-sighted a plan to, yeah. to make money. I disagree, at least really? recently, because Ryan the Last Dragon, they did a, they put it in theaters, uh-huh. and like it did well. Right. But like when they put it on Disney Plus, like then you saw everyone watch it, especially like during the pandemic and stuff. Right, but I I'm think thinking like post-pandemic, post, I feel like I mean, they might have that to looks switch like. back to. So I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah it seems yeah, like we're not there yet. Yeah, I mean, if it's not a Marvel movie or I don't know, I couldn't even tell you like a Disney movie that they put. I mean, like sold it insanely well, and they put that on like right to Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be in theaters. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think if I it's not a, wrong, if it's not a Marvel yeah. movie, I haven't really seen anything. Sonic Two that well. <laughs> Sonic Two, yeah, but like stuff doing. Sonic like, really Two big is business. actually performing well though, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? It, it made more money good. than the the original. Yeah, yeah. I think mm-hmm. it's just gonna screw over like the actors, especially not getting like the extra funds from theaters and like putting theaters out of business because they're not putting the movies in theaters. You yeah. know, pre- you know what what happens or. If it follows the pattern is what like the studios did, mm-hmm. then all of a sudden individual you're gonna have Meryl Streep have Meryl Streep plus and it's gonna be all <laughs> Meryl Streep all the time and money <laughs> is gonna go directly to her. Yeah, I don't know. I think I, we're just in a very big like transition period mm-hmm. of because I think Dis- I would say Disney Plus is easier to access, especially for like kids and stuff growing up. Like, oh, you don't have to buy it on DVD. And right. then you can you can still watch it as many times as you want, but like oh your parents are paying this monthly subscription, you can watch it literally at the push of a button whenever you want. So like if a kid in the ten years is obsessed with Soul, then they can keep watching that over and over, and it's right there. But then um, I, I, I had another point, but I forgot it. I guess I just still think like when you're paying a subscription service, it's not guaranteed to be there That's forever. Fair. That's exactly the thing. Also, mm-hmm. not everyone has access to like the internet yeah that's fair still that's like my thing when I'm thinking of like streaming that not everyone has access to internet Mm -hmm. so some people rely on like DVDs still I feel like or like going to they need to bring back family video right (laughs) (laughs) Um, yeah especially because yeah they're not I mean I think Netflix is the only one that does it where they put some of their shows on mm-hmm. to physical uh, media. Like Disney Plus is like, yeah, we're not putting any of the Marvel shows on physical media. And I think that is like an accessibility issue. But I don't know. I think we're just in a giant transition period because even yeah. news, news just came out, I think yesterday, that Netflix is thinking about putting, because uh, obviously Knives Out came out, if you've seen that, it was like a huge success. Oh, right. And so Netflix bought like Ryan Johnson off and was like, okay, you're going to make Knives Out 2 and 3, but it's going, coming to Netflix. And they just came out yesterday with like the f- decision. They're going to be like, okay, we're going to put Knives Out 2 into theaters for 45 days and then put it on Netflix. And so and if that goes well, I think Netflix is going to be one of the biggest like theater. Mm. Uh, well, they had to do something. They're losing money all of a yeah. sudden, right? <laughs> They're losing money. And they also just repealed this... Um, like decree in 2020 where studios can't couldn't own movie theaters from like 1950 to 2020 but they got rid of that you haven't seen anyone buy those out yet but like amazon is looking to buy amc for a second or netflix looking to buy like cinemark or something like that so wow then you could see them shoehorning their own you get like half the movie theaters playing like doctor strange and sonic 2 and these studio films but then you could start seeing like amazon primes amc and columbus playing the whatever 
hmm. movie they just came out with exclusively. So it's like, I don't know. It's, it's that's really it. I mean, where where does that ultimately lead? You know, I'm thinking in my head, oh, if that's going to be the case, if like, let's just take Amazon as the example. If Amazon takes over a chain of movie theaters or something and starts just delivering only their content mm-hmm. there, then I'm, I'm almost envisioning like a subscription service to like an add on to Amazon to have a subscription to be able to go to the movie theater like you would use yeah. as a, like a, a season pass to the trampoline park mm-hmm. or something. Or, or it's just like you show yeah. up, you're like, hey, that new Lord of the Rings episode is out, and me and my friends yeah, like, all have it. our passes. We're yeah. going to go to the movie theater for an hour. Honestly, I could see it, them doing something like where you already have Amazon, you just have to prove that you're an Amazon Prime subscriber. You go in, you, I mean, that oh, would fill tr- up really quickly. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it would be, I, I, just to see something on a big screen, like, it's a bit of a different experience. So I feel like that would be, honestly, kind of a decent business idea if you're like, hey, this is technically free if you already have Amazon Prime. If you want to pay for, like, the popcorn and stuff. That would be nice. That's and incredible you to see think stuff about. Start selling I would out like that. If they start using, um, if they start, doing anything like this and they incorporate how their business practice works at like their Amazon Fresh uh, grocery mm-hmm. stores yeah. if you know about it. That's what I was you just about. like go around shopping and you just leave yeah. mm-hmm. and, it, and then it charges your account so you can just uh, charge you by the minute of how long yeah. you spend in there and everything that you decide to do. Go watch three episodes of The Boys all these Theater 3 and All these little the microtransactions like oh well you can wash your hands but if you want soap yeah. for it. You can go watch the movie if you want subtitles you gotta pay me five bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just makes wow. me wonder like if in the future we'll get like in the year 2000 the, something from the government like more legislation on how they can or can't like own this much because like you know disney's grabbing every single well, corporation yeah, yeah i mean that they, they just got rid of it everything. in 2020 they, that was in place and they okay. just like repealed Cause that so yeah because that kind of sucks like mm-hmm. Because, yeah, you saw like it was you like. should have more independent owned things. It kind of sucks that yeah. everything's kind of. Back in the like, like 50s and 60s, like Paramount and Fox, I think it was, owned like every single movie theater. So if you weren't those companies, you had to go to some like really rinky dink independent one to play your movie. And so then the government was like, no more of that and stop doing that. And that's how we got like modern stuff where like, you know, multiple screens are playing different movies and from different studios and stuff. But. I don't know. I, we haven't seen the effect of them repealing that yet, so I'm kind of scared. Ah, uh, like the future. Yeah, the future's well, terrifying. Well, even artists I, are having issues because of, like, Taylor Swift now having to yeah, reproduce redo her all her music so she gets well, that's, paid. Well, that's so she has control over it, right? Yeah. 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 She's selling away the rights her, to like, you. crappy old whatever owner or whatever yeah. that was about. They were like, no. I don't know. <laughs> but don't they own the music? So how can she record it new? Do you know about this story? I mean, it's not... Th- like she's re or she's doing it's called Taylor's version so like she did change some of the songs or like how the lyrics she wanted in some of them like they wouldn't let her so like it's still like the same song but it might have like a different tune to it or some other different words so okay. like, it's not like the same thing and also like it's completely re-recorded so it's not does does Taylor Swift thing. have enough like of a following to to really to, to repurchase everything, you know what I'm saying? Like, is, is, is her 100%. fan base really going to do that for her? I yeah. think so. Yeah, she really. Is. She has so. one fan left on Earth. On Earth, it's me. Because <laughs> I don't, I don't think you necessarily need a big fan base. Is like, yeah. I don't know if you're from like Martin Garrix is this DJ producer. Yeah. Um, who I don't know if you know the song Animals, but it was kind of a cheesy like EDM song. Like 2013, song, early 2013. Big song, yeah. But he would sell his songs like the rights to his songs over to this le- uh, label called spin and records and more recently he like sued them and fought back to get back the masters so like that they were his so i i don't know exactly how that works or like how but i know his like i don't think you would necessarily need a huge fan base because i know in that term taylor swift would have way more of a fan base than he would Oh, well, she, you're right. 100%. I mean, she's got an yeah. army of fans. I never realized that. So, but will they will they want to pay for another album? You know, it's like oh oh oh. It's like, you know, when when new iterations of like the Star Wars films came out, it's not like everybody bought every single. I mean, there are probably some nerds mm-hmm. that did, but is this one of those circumstances where everybody will buy like that new version of the same thing? I would say so. I mean, she just did the mm-hmm. like her own version of Red, and like did the whole like a marketing thing around it, and had she like shot a short film for like one of the lesser popular songs from the album, but she made like a 10 minute version of it and shot this, um, 
short film to go along with it. And obviously, like, it brings up, dredged up all these, like, past drama things with her and her, like, ex-boyfriends and stuff. Okay. So there was a whole, there, there's a lot of, like, lore behind it, I guess. So, uh, yeah, people get behind it. And, you, and like, read when she re-recorded that, it was, like, what, I think that was last summer or, like, the beginning of last, sem- of, yeah. like, the fall semester. And it was, like, the, like, you couldn't go anywhere without hearing about it. So I think just it's a chance to like celebrate what came before and celebrate her being like okay i now own the recording of this i can do with it what i want the the music industry is like such a weird thing right now and it's it's confusing to hear about this story because taylor swift seems to be taking the opposite measures that most popular artists are so she's gonna try to take back control and re-record all this stuff so she has the rights to it all right mm-hmm. as opposed to like cutting out the, yeah. the music label that may or may not have screwed her over or something like mm. that right but then there's all these other huge artists um bob dylan neil young uh sting recently did this in the police they're just like selling off their entire catalog for mm-hmm. like these large lump sums of money to spotify or whoever mm-hmm. will purchase it i don't know about that i think it's uh, could be a money thing is like much as that sucks but I, it almost uh, seems like, like it, they're in need of money not yeah. in need but just trying to well I maybe I don't know it just seems like maybe they're just done they're just gonna retire right so like, yeah they don't they don't want it to go to their estate they're like screw my kids right, like, like sh- they're those freeloaders like I'm just gonna maximize my profits right now Something or like do that. they see the writing on the wall that like all that money is eventually gonna fade because mm. Spotify pays out terrible to their mm. artists and things hmm. yeah, I don't know I'm not really familiar with all that all I don't know jazz. if we can go back to movies but I wanted to know everyone's thoughts on like movie trailers because for me there's this movie coming out in June called The Black Phone, which has got Ethan Hawke in it, and it's like this horror movie. But the trailer itself, you, it seems to give away the entire plot. But, like, based on early reviews on Rotten Tomato, there's like 20 reviews so far. All of them have given it 100%. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering, like, if the trailers, if the movie's got that big of a twist that's not included in the trailer but i feel like a lot of trailers nowadays are giving away more than they should yeah well, I, I would i would not they counter are. that but i'd be like i don't know if the movie ne- like if even if the trailer does give away the whole thing and the movie's still fundamentally really good right like, people are gonna okay. review it really well so like if i mean or you have a, all these people that saw it so early like if you're like the movie reviewing type i'm not like i pass those guys off as like oh i get paid to show up i'm not watching the trailers i'm not doing whatever <laughs> so like they might not have seen the trailers and been like holy crap that just blew my mind okay so yeah. i don't know i don't know if they're like there doesn't necessarily need to be a twist but i would like to think that in that specific case there's something more than that's letting on so you said that the critics that have actually seen the whole film are, are like giving it the 100 yeah. percent yeah, yeah, yeah so that might be one of the cases where they actually like you know deliver and follow through mm-hmm. and 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 maybe really do still surprise you or something like that but oftentimes i think that you know the trailer that just gives you everything is trying to make up for the fact that you actually have a pretty weak movie right and they're trying to get you to go you know the 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 big one that i can think of is like when terminator genesis came out Mm -hmm. and they they just made like it was obvious like they just made it like clear that the the twist was revealed like Mm -hmm. in the trailer the most recent one yeah and and it was like where uh well the whole thing is that that John Connor was actually the bad guy, right? Yeah, and they yeah, just yeah. revealed it in the trailer. And I was like, well, that's, <laughs> okay. you know, that's why people would normally like, yeah. right. want to see it again or they tell their friends and this word of mouth thing would happen. But I think they just knew that they had a weak movie and they're mm-hmm. just like, hey, we're doing something different yeah. and here's what it is. You should see it. I think, I don't know if this is exactly related, but the, not in the sense of like giving too much away, but like the Suicide Squad movie that came out in 2016. Oh boy. They had a, <laughs> they had a, um, okay. Also, going back to soundtracks, that movie kind of has a bang in soundtrack. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, that they used this company called like Trailer Park or something to cut together the trailer for it, and they made it the first. If you've ever seen like the first trailer for it, it's the super kind of like grungy, dark like movie trailer. Wanted it to be taken a little bit more seriously because it was like DC. And then they got a new company to make the second trailer, and they made it like flashy and colorful and these like neon lights and all this stuff. It was set to like a Queen song, I think, and people responded to that one a lot more so they i think just paid off the like actual film editors that were working on it like halfway done with editing the actual movie and they paid this trailer company to edit the entire movie and then it was just god awful bad like (laughs) i don't know i don't think well yeah the the, completely spin how people view the film based on how you cut a trailer together so you get people that aren't as familiar with like the actual film how it's going to look as a whole to 
cut the trailer together, like you could just completely change how people perceive the movie and then what it ends up being, which yeah. I think is insane. The 90 second trailer is an art form in itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And uh, some might say the ultimate art, or back to what you were saying before, you're talking like short form, like commercials and things yeah. like that. That's what I think is like top tier of like media art, man. Right. If you can like take seconds and have like this, you know, very specific like product that you're selling, but still like work in like the feels and the emotion mm -hmm. to get people to act and, and think a certain way, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fair. I like that. But I don't know. I think back to the, oh, the trailer sorry. thing. I yeah, I. I'm just still on this black phone thing. Cause <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have whole, to look into that. Let's look yeah. at the black whole phone. like movie. The trailer gives away that there's like this kid that gets kidnapped by Ethan Hawke. And, and he's wearing a weird mask. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a mm -hmm. Oni kind of mask yeah. thing. And the kid like can communicate with other kids that were kidnapped and I would assume killed in this room that he's locked in. And they seem to help him get out and that's like the trailer so it's like okay kid gets kidnapped talks kid gets to out well, I, I, <laughs> kid I gets mean, out so i'm yeah. like wondering what else that could be is. the whole movie but i mean like you don't know if the kids are dead 100 percent. okay you don't know okay. how the phone yeah. works you don't see the kid get out right so okay. i don't know I, I would say that there's like there's a bunch of like if if by seeing other movies you're like okay here's these things that we just don't know they're like okay maybe that's why you go to figure those things out and if it doesn't answer your questions then it sucks but if it does <laughs> then like cool I got all the answers that I wanted going into this movie that the trailer gave me but it started implying that it's like a sixth sense like I see dead people and they help me yeah yeah, yeah maybe. like I, the kid uses his phone the black phone <laughs> to communicate <laughs> nice phone. and he can like talk to him through it but then I guess he can also I don't know if he can see them or if they just have them like imposed as like mm -hmm. as if they're there well, I, the dead kids are in the room talking yeah. to him I would say the the question that the trailer gave me is so like Ethan Hawke's kidnapping these kids and you're assuming that the ones that come before are dead because he's talking to like these like apparitions versions right. of them. Why is he keeping the kids that he they're like the specific mm. one that he just kidnapped alive for so long? Like, and I guess you gotta figure that out. In I, the gotta, movie. Gotta so I guess that it doesn't out. give away yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a hundred percent ratings and stuff. It sounded like like all the things really came together for this. Mm -hmm. But I'm right. wondering why the casting decision. Why uh, don't take Ethan Hawke, who's like this bittersweet sort of like smiley guy. Yeah. And make him this. Well, this, he also doesn't what? take. Is he like a kidnapping pedophile guy now? Like, <laughs> yeah. darn it! He also doesn't take projects that aren't that are like shallow, kind of like base level stuff. Mm -hmm. So at least uh, out of his mouth, that's what he said. So like, I think just anything that he's in at all has some sort of like value to it, maybe. So I don't. Yeah, him being in it in general is more like a, okay. There's got to be something else here. And that, I guess it could be that he saw that we aren't seeing. And I guess it could be too early because I think it comes out like June twenty fourth, mm -hmm. and there were only like twenty or thirty, like when I was looking at yeah. Rotten Tomatoes. But based off the ones that I had seen, they looked pretty good reviews mm -hmm. wise. So I don't. Yeah, I saw um, the, that Nicolas Cage unbearable weight of mass and ta massive talent movie recently. Nice. That movie was getting like hundred percent out the wazoo uh, before it came out, and I saw it and I was just kind of like, all right. Too was gimmicky? A, that was, a was it like too meta? It was a little meta, um, but I also like didn't. I saw the first trailer. I was like, "Oh, this is like a buddy comedy with like Nicolas Cage and Pedro Pascal. This will be funny." And then the second trailer, I think we saw in front of some movie. It might have been Uncharted or something. Uncharted, yeah, yeah. And it revealed this whole other like B plot of like Tiffany Haddish is like an FBI agent and. Pedro Pascal is like some drug crime lord who, and Nicolas Cage has to go undercover at the FBI to like take down Pedro Pascal but he's trying to be his best friend. I was like, I wish I didn't know that mm -hmm. going into it. That would have been a whole nother thing that I found out while I was watching it. And there's like more twists that have to do with that plot point but it was just like, had I not seen that trailer going into it, it, it might have been a completely different movie. Hmm. I will say <laughs> it's this Nick Cage movie called Willy's Wonderland. Mm -hmm supposed to be a like spin-off of this horror game called Five Nights at Freddy's. This whole movie he's in like this like shut down pizzeria with animatronics, right? And these animatronics come to life. He does not say a single word the entire movie. But he is the main character of the movie. Really horrible movie, but I would really suggest watching it once. Just to <laughs> at least see one time. How bad it is. Oh. That would give me nightmares. That makes me think of like 
Chuck E. Cheese in a way, like <coughs> stuck in Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, those, what a nightmare the, that would be! Those characters were to like come to life, like they're scary looking. Yeah, the animatronic, like yeah, the band the or band. whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. What was the worst one? I think it was like the 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 gorilla drummer. Oh gosh, always oh, creeped me out the most. <laughs> I don't remember what those even looked like. I think I'd only been to Chuck E. Cheese like three times. It's you know, trailers are supposed to be these things that like force you to go to the movies, right? They're mm-hmm. like, oh well, this is obviously we're selling this movie to you. Has there ever been one that just like completely hit the mark or missed the mark, where you're just like, mark? ooh, I'm definitely not going to see that movie. Most of them, I'd say. <laughs> really. Um, so yeah. they're not doing their job anymore. Oh, uh. Uh-uh. Or have you you got the get off my lawn like old man a syndrome? We're like, yeah, I'm a film buff, so you like got to be mo- cooler the for me. Majority of like the run of the mill ones, you can be like, okay, I know exactly where this is going, and that most of the time is the case. Um, I'm I'm trying to think, and I'm recently, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know any recently, but I feel like trailers. It would be a lot cooler if they like instead of giving away. Because I feel like a lot of trailers give away a lot of story, or like, and I know you kind of need that to like know what you're going into. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it would be a lot cooler if they gave you like bare minimum, mm-hmm. but did it in a way to where you're like, "Ooh, what is this? I want to yeah. go in and see." They it. did that. And I feel like you just don't see that. Yeah, in I feel like this isn't answering the question as much. But uh, when the Avengers Endgame trailers were coming out, they would edit like different characters in place of other characters, or just completely like crop shots so you didn't see certain people. Mm. Or completely left out the fact that there's like a five year time jump. So you're in the movie theater in the first like 10 minutes, you're like, okay, the main bad guy's dead and there's a five year time jump. Like, right now, that where, was a big where, are we, where are we going? Like, you're 10 minutes in, it's a three hour movie and you're completely lost. So I think the more that they hide is better when they start like actively giving things away or like, or like oh, it's a, it, there's a trailer moment, it's like a huge trailer moment. I'm like, okay, well, you just took away the excitement that I might have had watching it later. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess, sorry. If no, I, I, was just, I was just going to take it back to the, um, the like, trailers. Maybe that not miss the mark, but I will say um, having watched, like, the James Bond trailer and the Morbius trailer, like, 5,000 times just because of, like, everything getting delayed. Yeah. Like, it was almost, like, jading where it's like, I don't want to see this movie because I've seen the trailer probably longer than so the many run times. time of the movie. Yeah. Oh, man. I was going to say the Uncharted trailer completely missed the mark, but I still ended up seeing oh, yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it was so I feel sad. Like I wanted to see that so it bad. Was such a it bad looked movie. like a really good movie. You and didn't then invite t- Candace? I didn't she know Candace. I, didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know them yet. Oh, all right. Yeah. And, yeah, but they told me that it was bad, so I was like, oh. Aww. Yeah, I think trailers are overhyping movies nowadays. I, I just, yeah. it's hard to make video game movies. I feel like that very many movies around video no games that's never worked. worked i mean resident evil like made money and they mm. made sequels but it was they're never good movies. right i'm i'm interested to see this mario movie though because it got like <laughs> hell no well they got like you chris walk, yeah. pratt as mario like mm. seth rogan as donkey Kong. like i'm just yeah. i'm not going into it expecting it oh, to yeah. be good but the cast that they have seems to be like, I think it's weird. How is this going to... Yeah. Nothing will ever beat the original Mario Brothers movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the live action one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dennis Hopper and John Leguizamo. Yep. Right? And the Bowser they had for that. <laughs> oh. I liked how grungy the movie was, though. I feel like... like yeah. It, I mean, that, it had like the, the dark and gritty before mm-hmm. that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, though. The movie trailer that did the best job of... of really making you would like wander still and like have to go see the movie to figure out what in the world was going to happen this is a little before your time but the matrix the yeah, original yeah, matrix heard, movie yeah, about all that. like uh, like really did an incredible job of just making you be like what is this going to be about and i have to find out mm-hmm. like i just need to know yeah mm-hmm. so i think i had a class we talked about that with like like the website that it would lead you to at the end and like the whole marketing yeah some of that, that stuff was pretty mm, pretty in depth mm-hmm. it is some of that stuff with albums too remember there was a nine inch nails album that had this like internet subculture that oh, you could yeah. like uh uh you'd go to a specific website and then you would learn in like the the cd like envelope or whatever that if you actually clicked on this button it would be a secret link to go to other oh, places cool. and you have this whole like underground universe huh. um i'm hoping that they bring st- like gimmicky stuff like that back to filmmaking like like blair witch project or something oh. you know Love Blair Witch what, would, what would be the modern version of that? Because I, I, that was taking like, advantage of like uh, the initial viral idea. I don't know if this is the same, but the Batman movie that they just came out with, 
at the vi there was no like post credit scene or any like stuff in the credits but like at the end a link flashed and for like weeks it took like entire cultures on like reddit and online to decode like this like sub or like this um pseudo like riddlers riddle stuff online cool and then after a couple of weeks when people cracked all the codes and solved everything it released like a five minute like deleted scene from the movie or something like that that mm -hmm. had the joker in it so it was oh cool. that's that's like, what led people to that yeah, joker yeah, yeah. scene because so i saw the joker so scene. stuff like that like i mean they probably would have released it anyway eventually but it's stuff i don't know if that's kind of hitting the same mark where it's like yeah here's this outside this sort of uh there's a term for it but easter egg remember. yeah like an easter egg like a yeah uh, an outside of the world uh, stuff yeah there was a marketing around. campaign like that for for lost the tv show when yeah, that yeah, when yeah. that was around but it was it was a really cool sort of like youtube related thing and and it was, so it was outside of the realm of the episodes and things like that but it had some video content some of the characters but not like the important players but it gave you sort of this different perspective on what was going on mm -hmm. but then they just sort of abandoned it and then which, which is actually kind of what what it felt like with that whole show if you ever watch it it's sort <laughs> of like ah, exactly we're heard. just gonna let this just train wreck this. Yeah. kill itself uh, I still love the found footage movies like Blair Witch Project, um, and I think Cloverfield. <laughs> Cloverfield Cloverfield is fantastic. I just watched yeah, that one, was a really cool idea. This Korean one called uh, Gonjio Haunted Asylum, which was like sort of same Blair Witch style. But I, I, those are definitely my favorite like horror ones, even though they're a little cheesy. I just like the like because I grew up with like like scary videos on YouTube which would kind yeah. of be like found footage or like reading scary stories online which could also be sort of the same thing so like when I'm watching those I'm like kind of having nostalgia maybe or just like a sense of like familiarity right with yeah it. did I, you see the VHS movies yes oh. and I watched the most recent one last week oh there's new there, ones there was one on uh, Amazon or no on Shudder I don't know if you've heard of Shudder but sure. it's like uh, it was called VHS 94 didn't really like that one, but I did like how it would be like three short stories. Yeah, the anthology style. With a kind of all combining story as well. But yeah, I like the VHS ones. Some of them were a little cheesy, but overall. Yeah. There was one that really affected me. It was the one with, uh, God, it's like two like frat dudes like bring home a girl. And then and then she turns out to be some sort of like oh the hotel room one? yes the yeah, hotel and she turns out to be one. some sort of like weird creature I can't uh -huh. remember the name of the it's like this mythological creature but it just that just the tears them apart oh yeah. my god that was <laughs> wild I just maybe it was because I had no idea what I was in for because you don't also you don't really get the vibe in those like anthology movies like are you gonna stay in this realm like like where are right. we gonna go with mm -hmm. this like is are they gonna be slashers or not it's, it was just it really threw me off. I hate the problem that I have with, and I'm sure you've experienced this uh, by watching horror movies with me, is I can't, uh, like, I can, it takes a lot for me to, like, get into it and get scared. Mm -hmm. I will sit there and crack up at, like, the, like, the, at, like a jump scare or something, and I, I don't like that I do that because... I feel like I'm missing out on the experience of what the movie is supposed to be because I'm just sitting there. I'm like, I'm waiting for this trope to happen, and yeah. it happens, and I start cracking well, plus up. Plus, everybody around you probably hates you at that moment. I'm just laughing. I don't think that's bad, though, <laughs> because for me, like, my favorite part of the horror movies is just, like, the story. Mm. Yeah, so, like, okay. I think you could still laugh at a cheesy jump scare, that's but fair. the idea, like, the story overall could be a good. Yeah. And so I was, like, after Homecoming in, like, high school, we were watching one of the Insidious movies, I think, mm -hmm. and... Uh, there was this one part where they're like at a dinner table and they just like it just cuts to another shot and there's like a some demon with like a red face like right behind and everyone screamed and I just started cracking up laughing because I was like that looks kind of like Darth Maul like yeah that red face yeah and I, everyone was like screaming I was <laughs> laughing and they were like if you're not gonna take this seriously you can leave <laughs> <laughs> okay. well, well sorry wow well, you know. just you're so desensitized that well, you need more well the thing is like, like they with, need to with step with up horror, their game or video games yeah. Mm -hmm. I cannot play a second of like really? Outlast or anything. Else. There's I like, horror, if yeah. any, any horror game makes you hide in a locker, <laughs> I'm out. You can't get me to like, if you're in a locker and a shadow passes by, I'm uninstalling that game. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I can't do that. Do have to ask if anyone's seen the movie Don't Breathe? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's the one with the blind guy. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah. he's like, and it, impregnates someone like that he has kidnapped in his basement. So like right. he's this really horrible person. Right. The second movie, <laughs> they make you feel bad for the old guy. Really? Do they actually or do they try to? 
it made me feel bad for a minute until I was like, this guy is like a horrible person. He dies like, in the second one, doesn't he? Yes. Okay. Oh. But so. he, well, <laughs> spoiler, spoiler alert. Well, I don't know, it came was out it, like was two years in the ago. Trailer? It was bad. Nobody watched it. <laughs> the second one? Yeah. I liked the second one. Oh. But. But he, you're just confused emotionally. You're confused because <laughs> after like his house burns down in the first one, or no, there is some like house that burns down in the first one when he escapes and he so there's like this like stranded little girl that he kind of adopts and takes into his life and in the second movie he's kind of protecting her and there's some people that are trying to get her so you feel bad because you're like he's being a good person in this movie and then you're like but in the first movie this dude kidnapped someone and impregnated her so it's like you want to feel bad but you can't so I kind of like I didn't enjoy that, but I thought that was like an interesting take on like a it was horror. like a like a complex character. Because you're like thing. it challenged your right, ideas. Yeah. I did I did think because I caught the like last thirty minutes of the last one. When I was cleaning a theater once and it was empty, and there was like a there's a part in there with like the mother and the daughter with mm-hmm. like a surgery part, yeah. and that was like maybe so yeah maybe horror for me isn't as much like the jump scare stuff mm-hmm. as it is this like super unsettling sort of like dystopian. Or just like weird ideas, like yeah, the I don't is it a spoiler to talk about what happens in the? I already said he dies. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Um. So. Yeah, he's sweating now. Yeah. In the I think it's the last part of the Don't Breathe Two movie, the mom was like a drug addict or something, or had some sort of health condition, and she needed um a new heart, and so she's trying to get her daughter back or something, and have this like forceful surgery to get like harvest the like organs from her daughter to make herself better and stuff like that really unsettles me for like weeks so that is a very that's horror stuff for me is like these terrible concepts of like inhumanity yeah so but you give me the jump scare and i'm laughing so you didn't like the hostile movies i don't know if i'm familiar with hostile really Mm -hmm. oh wow and none of you guys i'm Mm -hmm. drawing blanks really yeah oh man yeah it's sort of uh, in the same realm of like a like a saw sort of torture okay. porn kind of thing, but yeah. really it's just like like um, like college students go visit Europe, and then and they stay at a hostel, okay. and then they're like cherry picked from that hostel, and then just like uh, people basically creepy people mm-hmm. pay to have access to these like private areas where they can have like weapons and tools mm-hmm. and basically just kill people in, in weird ways. So they okay. just like harvest these people from these hostels and mm-hmm. they just like let these high rollers kill them. Those movies are in like even series like Squid Game, like the torture kind of esque oh, stuff. Is good. It's like hit or miss for me because I just recently watched the original Saw like a couple months ago, and I just wasn't a fan. Mm-hmm. And that might have been. So you're not going to do the Saw marathon leading into <laughs> Saw X? Or Probably whatever. not. I did watch Spiral though, and I thought that was that's the Chris decent. Rock one. Yeah, yeah, that was like a spin off of Saw. It was decent, <laughs> um, but. It sounds I, so funny to say. It's like, oh, that's the Chris, the Chris Rock, Rock Saw movie. movie. <laughs> I, that was the part. I watched like bits and pieces of it, and like just him being in it. I, he was like his voice. I, I couldn't stop picturing the zebra from Madagascar, <laughs> and I was like, I can't. With this I can't movie. get. I can't I just, immerse myself in yeah. it. I couldn't believe how like grunt. Like when I was watching Saw, I thought I was in like, like watching like a Linkin Park music video. Like it <laughs> felt so grungy, and like I was like, not for me. Mm-hmm. But horror itself, I'm more like Ben was saying, like unsettling than like gore slasher yeah. kind of thing in I'll general. I'll say uh, Midsummer did really good at Midsummer like just unsettling yeah. me because they have the like visuals like right in the beginning of like someone with like a car uh, exhaust and then uh, they do like this part where I think they're on drugs or something and like the the grass is like going through their hand and it's like trippy stuff like that and there's a bunch of like body horror at the end of it and stuff like that where it's like oh this is like stuff that's really grounded in reality but uh, it's just like really unsettling and creepy that yeah. stuff gets to me. Ah. What do you Good, think, though, on horror movies, Candace? Yeah. You've been a little quiet. A big horror fan over I here, I can tell. She's like, I like that, Meryl Streep. I she's like, not in it anymore. <laughs> okay, the Wears Prada. I've been trying to get her I'll to watch horror movies. I'll watch some spooky stuff. I just don't like when it's, like, super you bodies s- being ripped apart and stuff. Okay. Like You look like a paranormal activity kind of person. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Uh... Because there's not, there's not like the gore in those. The creepy you know? one that I've seen that I didn't have to deal with people being like ripped apart. It was like these girls were like, since a young age, have been trapped in like this building. They follow these rules and take these pills and yada yada. And one of the girls finally discovers that like, 
that she shouldn't take the medicine. That's what's knocking them out at night. And mm. then she finds out that like these people, they come and visit them. So um, to buy their faces. And so like they, they're not allowed to see sunlight or nothing. So their skin stays perfect. And mm. these rich people would come in and look at the girls while they're sleeping. And they're like, I, you know, I want her face. I want yeah. her face. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever seen that was Split? Cre- that was a little creepy. I feel, I like, I feel like you would like Split. split. split? You, could watch no. That. No. you gotta show Candace so. Split. Yeah, let's, I, do, let's give Candace a list of oh, essential so, horror yeah, films. I, <laughs> I think Split is the one that you would like. Um, there was this French one. It was a little too else. scary for me. <laughs> uh, I will. I do have uh, an I am inspiring trying, story for, uh, if you're familiar with like the Slender Man, like, mythology Ooh. at all mm. no. it's like this tall uh like very like white dude with no face yeah. has like really long arms and like wears like this suit i was super into like the like mythos of that in like middle school it was it was like found footage like one of those like online like legend urban legend type things okay scared the crap out of me yes. well they made like a studio movie about it and i went and saw it in like eighth grade freshman year and this was actually i have a i owe a lot to that movie because it was so unbelievably bad that it started, I had just like, oh, if I'm paying to go see a movie at the movie theater, I kind of realized, I was like, I am not going to not enjoy it because I paid money to see it. Yeah. This movie completely broke me to the point that I think where I am at now, where I became so passionate about like, what makes a movie this god awful bad? (laughs) Because I paid money to see it. I watched, I went with my friends, which usually like makes the experience better. And I hated it so much. I still don't like it. It was such a bad movie that it inspired me to like, like I could do something better than this or something along that vein or like it was so bad. I was completely broken and I needed to know how something could like bat. I started becoming critical of movies after that. And then that led me to like the passionate of like, Oh, here's, here's what's good. Here's what's bad. Here's what I like. Here's what I don't like. So I owe everything to the Slender Man movie. <laughs> I downloaded the video game in middle school. Oh, played I it like that, one yeah. time, deleted it. I got it. a virus on my computer trying it to was, download it. It was way too scary, man. Scary, huh? Cause I you just you. wander around and then it's just, Jumps at you. I couldn't handle it. Just a, a skinny, tall dude with no but face. But he's like, mm-hmm. sp- kind of like, sp- it kind of looks like a spider in a way. Yeah. I want to say. I so. Yeah, and also when you like would look at it, your screen you would start to get like. You can see him in the distance. Like, fuzzy, yeah, fuzzy. glitch. Huh. And then I'm like, hell no. Uh, my Get kids. <laughs> my kids were just presented with uh, Siren Head. Oh, oh, Siren Head. And oh. they came home, and so so they we got these neighbors, two houses over, or whatever. They have a little bit more like unbridled access to YouTube yeah. or Alexa or whatever. Yeah. Um, so they oftentimes hear music or they see things that they wouldn't normally just yeah. come across at our house. So they come home and everything's fine, normal stuff. No one's talking about anything, but then just like all of a sudden. Hours after being home, they just both of them break down. They're freaking oh, out, and they're no. like, "Siren Head is the worst thing ever." And I was like, "What are you talking?" About? I had to go. I had no yeah, idea what it was. Yeah. I had to go look at it, and oh, it's no. like, it's pretty weird. Yeah, it's, it's pretty actually, weird. It's stuff like that though that I feel like is not credit. I'm not saying it's good that they started breaking down and crying about that stuff, yeah. but like those are things that is like, I don't know, they kind of ground. I and mean, like when I was a kid, like I'm grateful for being like scared out of my mind about stuff like that. Because it's like, yeah, yeah. grudge. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, like that. This is like, what you're in so for in life. Like, this stuff is like terrifying, but I'm glad I had those experiences. Yeah, so it'll, it'll they'll, they'll be better off in the future. I just didn't. Uh, I can't right. believe they took it so seriously. Oh, I no, just had yeah. no idea. Like, I thought it was like. I put it in the same realm as like an old Salad Fingers video or something oh, silly oh like God. that, you know, just I, creepy I and actually weird. I had like but multiple panic attacks watching really? the Salad Fingers videos. Like, that was like last summer. <laughs> I will say though, the story of Siren Head's kind of interesting and sad because the it there's this guy on Instagram called Trevor Henderson that just makes like renders of like scary stuff like that, and someone stole one of his. Mm pieces of art and made it into like siren head yeah so it kind of sucks because like it blew up off of yeah. not him mm. but i am a big fan of like his work because he just makes really unsettling like mm. renders of it stuff makes it even scarier yeah. Yeah. piracy <laughs> Ooh. yeah i don't know so i think i think they'll be better off just keep them out of the creepy pasta like subreddits right right yeah. Well, cool, guys. Thanks for being part of the awesome audio podcast once again. Yeah. This one was yeah, extremely fun. All right, guys. Maybe we'll see you next time. Uh, more awesome audio podcasts uh, on YouTube. See you later.